everybody. Drown in Love, number six. Joe has gone back off to the States and he gets the phone call. He's been headhunted. This is the call he's been waiting for in his career where he can, he can finally get the job as harbour pilot, shipmaster, ship captain for the Asian companies, the big oil tankers. He has the grand plan of retiring to Asia. Hopefully a Phuket condo. Phuket. <laughs> and he's called by one of those companies and they've said to him that they will give him his dream job. It'll be a lot more money, but he has to get certification for certain stretches of water and certain harbors. After checking his list, he's three short. That means this year he has to get three more. By the end of the year, it'd be good to go. He'll be able to leave the American company. He'll be able to sell his house in the States. Finally, move at the grand age of 45 46 he'll be set up for life he'll be piloting the super tankers through that Malaki Straits next to Indonesia he'll be taking boats across to Goa India up to the Suez into the Middle East but mainly around Hong Kong Singapore Philippines it's the dream dream job after a chat on the phone, everything's set, he'll be in touch with them at the end of the year. He can now start planning, for sure. He's currently going through some of the certifications. He's on a, a long stint where he's doing six weeks on, four weeks training, six weeks on, four weeks training. It's months. He's not going to get back to Phuket till the beginning of September. May, Nan. So we're in the middle of the year, it's low season, rainy season, uh, May and Nan, not May's training, Nan, she's coming along very well and she's found another part-time girl, Far didn't want the job, but she's found another part-time girl to, to step in and start learning, but that shop is really small, you can only get the two desks in there and a couple of seats for customers. But it'll do, it'll have to do. It's all decorated now, it's all up and running, posters everywhere. She's got all the contacts in Phuket, Phuket area. All the uh, day trips to the islands, the, the boat companies, the minivans, the taxis, the jet skis, everything covered. Business is, is going really well. Even though it's low season, it's ticking over nice. Now, as you remember, she's working with her old contacts in the tourist board of Thailand on some Malaysian companies, big tour companies that bust the foreigners in and they go all around Thailand doing day trips, week trips. And May's still working on that. Those trips are starting and she's got uh, unwritten contracts at the moment, but things are all going well. Nan is loving the job, she's smartened up, <laughs> she's got some new company clothes and far her relationship, we're still not 100% sure if they're girlfriend, girlfriend, but it looks that way. But everything is going swimmingly. It's time for fate to step in. We've learnt the path and watched May coming from school, from the uh, up in the uh, north east of Thailand growing up educating through to her own business we've seen Joe from the States great job finding his way to Phuket as his favorite destination for living in the future but they've never really properly met and come September beginning of September Joe finally gets a break, he's got a few weeks off and he has in his spare time been looking at condos online. There's so many new builds in Phuket all the time but prices keep rising, 
drop slightly and then rise again. Low season would be a good time to buy a condo. But does he want brand new, off plan? He'd rather see the building, the condo finished. He wants a secure condo. Not too fussed if it is right in Patong or a few miles either side. Four or five miles. His intentions on this trip, he's seriously got to put his head down and find a condo. He arrives back in Phuket. This time he takes a hotel right on Patong Beach on the stretch between May Shop and Bangla Road. Right in the middle. So you have the beach and the sea but there is the road. It's the one way road and shops and things but the hotels are there just behind. He picks one right in the middle. He's got a swimming pool. In fact he's got two swimming pools. Perfect. Right center, central. He's got everything he needs, food, bars, beach, easy to get to everywhere. And he comes in late night, flight arrival, gets down to the hotel and checks in. In the morning, his first thing is to get onto some of the local agents that he's been talking to online, start arranging all the condo visits, and he sets up over the first week a couple of condos every day and he still wants to go he, one of his certifications will be the Malaki Strait he still needs to go and have a look around the islands between Krabi and Phuket and check those out something to do with currents and the uh, underwater uh, all that the oceanography so he needs to set up some day trips and things to those islands. With that in his mind, first thing in the morning he's off looking at condos. Lunchtime, he's now gravitating. He, the bars at the end of the beach, right next to May's shop, there's three or four bars in a row, right next to the road, so the traffic's coming down to the beach these three or four sort of oblong bars, they've all got three or four girls working in there. Um, not too loud of music. And then, as I've said, the lane, little lane, right behind the bars. Um, May Sharp, the salon, and the crazy lady at the toilets at the back. But that's, he keeps gravitating to that front bar, the one right on the corner where he can sit the beach is there, everything's there, he just loves that bar now. Lunchtime, he heads to the bar. Now they don't actually cook food and things there, but there's little cafes and things around the corner where they, they have menus from those cafes. They can sell you the food, they'll make a little bit of a kickback and they ring the cafe, food comes. And he's arrived, he's sat there, his usual spot, Back to the road, looking to the left is the beach, right in front is May's shop. And he orders some food, gets a drink, he's got his paper, he's got all the paperwork from the condos. And here he is, back in Phuket. What's the difference this time? Straight in front of him, May's shop is now all open, clear window, bright, and he can see straight in girl facing him in the back is Nan and there's another desk to the left there nobody there this, this time of day for some reason gets his drink has some food paperwork and he looks up and notice May comes around the corner he doesn't know her name into the shop and he thinks that is that girl I saw that's the one we bumped into as she came around the corner. The one that spoke the perfect English. He's, he's in his the seeds in his brain he keeps seeing this girl. Anyway, he thinks, I need some day trips, islands. I'm going to go in. I'm going to go and see. Packs up his paperwork, pays his bill, 
in he goes. It's only three metres. And he walks in and Nan's there smiling at him. May's got her back to him. She's in a filing cabinet. And she turns around as he comes in. And last time she was covered in paint when he saw her. Now, as she turns round, long dark hair, she's got the glasses on, looks like the secretary, white blouse, uh, dark blue skirt, five foot six, five foot seven. She turns around and says hello. And it's as if, like before, the thunderbolt strike hits him right between the eyes. You, you occasionally are out and about and you suddenly see a member of the opposite sex, perhaps, and you just eye contact and it bang. She turns around and says hello. He hadn't got far in, in to, to Nan's desk. May turns around, hello, how can I help you? Perfect, perfect English. And Joe is, again, he's sort of dumbstruck. He just, wow. She's special. <laughs> There's something about, it's the English, impeccable English. The, the clothes, they're perfect. The smile, the sexy glasses. The shop's all open, it's all bright. It's as if there's light shining on her. It, it just hits him and his mouth's open and just stutters and yes. He regains himself and yes please, I'd like to try and find some day trips to the islands. James Bond Island, PP Island and all the rest of it, co-PP. And she beckons him to sit down at her desk and he looks to across to Nan and Nan's smiling and he sits down and there he is right in front of this goddess he's um, his mind is totally stuck just looking at her <laughs> you just imagine the dumb look on his face anyway she starts telling him you know asking him exactly what he wants and eventually works out that he just wants a few couple of day trips for now to the islands um, at the end of the first week probably he's got loads of condos to go and see but he doesn't mention that at the end of the week he'd like to go on a couple of day trips and she pulls out loads of brochures and gives them to him and roughly tells him the prices and things and he says well, I'll take these away and have a look and study and I'll come back. He's thinking I've got to come back when I'm my head straight. Wow. He just again he can't take her eyes off her. And she mentions, have we met before? To him and he's oh she remembers me. And he I think we bumped into each other uh, when you had a bit of paint on you. And then she remembered and a bit of a giggle. Oh yes. Anyway, he's got my paper, he says, I'll come back to see you. Up he goes, out of the door, and instead of going jumping straight back on his bar in view, he's he's sort of a little bit embarrassed and he's not sure, so he heads off round the corner back to the hotel. All the way back, he's just like, oh my, wow, wow, wow. And to me, he's just another foreigner, middle-aged, she hasn't been hit by the thunder lightning bolt not at all they've met at last they've spoken it's only taken six episodes but they've eventually face to face and spoken how will they get on what will happen next i don't know i will See you on the next episode. Bye for now.